Good day, everybody. My name is Benny Boop Cumber Crunch, and welcome to some more Subnautica news. Now, this episode we have quite a few things to go over, so make sure you stick around till the end if you want to be completely up to date with all the latest news. There's some pretty interesting stuff today. Also, got a new microphone. Some of you will not have noticed yet because many of you didn't watch the We Happy Few episode, which is obviously fine just saying I did mention it in that but obviously I have just got a new microphone hopefully it sounds better for you should be clearer it's a better microphone dedicated all that so let me know what you think of it in the comments but hopefully it's better let me know so first up we have some new concept art which has been released for the expansion and the first one is called new location that's all they've named it I'm currently calling it the lychee mushroom kingdom because they look like mushrooms and lychees if you know what lychees are you know what I'm talking about or maybe it's just me, I don't know. They kind of look like lychees to me. So as you can see, there is a Seamoth size comparison in the center. It is a pretty massive plant flower system, whatever it is. But again, looks really cool. Glowing, perhaps. Um, doesn't look like there's any chance of any creatures living inside the plant for once, which is actually quite good. So it's just just looks like there's some kind of nice flora. Again, this is not final. The disclaimer is this may not make it into the game. This is not final by any stretch of the imagination, but it's good that they gave a Seamoth four size comparison, but again, as they have mentioned, the Seamoth may not be present in the expansion. Next we have the Ice Column concept art. Now this one is really cool. There's another sub, if you can see in the bottom left here, and it's a new sub that we haven't seen before. Perhaps the replacement for the Seamoth in this Arctic biome. Maybe it's not, but again, the disclaimer is this may all change. Now, one of the biggest ideas that people have had with the Arctic expansion is the idea of perhaps having frozen leviathans, frozen creatures, locked in the ice that you can look at. And I personally think that would be a really cool thing, and I, I think it would be honestly a shame if they didn't do that, of, uh, something along those lines, frozen creatures, because it's just so perfect. These ice columns would be perfect for that, I think, just having random creatures stuck in the columns. I think that would be pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. You can see there's more flora towards the front that doesn't actually look particularly icy, but it is dotted around, so more red new flora that we have never seen before. And that new sub is very interesting, but as I said, it does not mean it will be in the game. So for all of you PC players, this doesn't apply to any PS4 or Xbox One players, the Subnautica multiplayer mod looks like it's being released to the public in December 2018. That is the release date that Sunrunner, who is one of the developers of the mod, has put into a trailer video, which I will link in the description if you want to watch it all yourself. I'll just go over a few of the features that they are implementing in this final build of the multiplayer for release. It's going to include world saving, so you can make a world with your friend, build a base and save it, and you'll be able to go back to it, which is obviously a basic thing with multiplayer, but it really wasn't easy to do, so I'm glad they've managed to do that. There's docking as well, so your Seamoth can dock in a Seamoth, Wait. Your Seamoth can dock in a Cyclops, and that should be fine. There should be any animation issues or anything like that. It's all done nicely. Player colors also are things so you can identify your friends just by looking at them. So you can have a turquoise, yellow, red, blue, any color you want, I'm guessing. And improved building because I did play the multiplayer mod a few months ago, maybe even a year ago, and it wasn't very polished. So hopefully this has massively improved it. So a bit of clarification. People have been going on Twitter and asking the developers whether the Wasp will be in the game. If you don't know what the Wasp is, it basically Anthomnia released a video a few days ago on this mod which implements a new submersible called the Wasp. It's very, very basic. It's a cool mod nonetheless, but it's not official by any stretch. It's completely fan-made. People seem to be thinking that this is a new submarine for the Arctic biome somehow because that's just how quickly fake news spreads on Subnautica, uh, it's not particularly helped with misleading titles and stuff, but it's not official, it is a mod, it's PC only, it's nothing, so don't bug the devs about it, because it's not a thing that's happening, it's completely fan-made. So we've got some tweets from Tom Joubert, who is the story narrative designer kind of guy for it. Um, he tweeted that the Subnautica expansion is coming sooner than you might think. He said, I'm so excited for everyone to discover our ambitious plans for the Subnautica expansion coming to be confirmed next year. And the time for that discovery is fast approaching us. We don't like 
closed development and as you will know this is probably referencing early access which I think is what they're going to do with the expansion so we could have access to it sooner than you might think so just keep an eye out for that. Got another tweet here from Abraxis someone tweeted him saying hopefully some fun leviathans in the arctic biome he replied with a gif of Robert Downey Jr. saying maybe, so that's basically confirmation. And then finally, there is a post-mortem PowerPoint which has been created by Jonas, and it's a really interesting PowerPoint to read, so I will leave the link to it in the description below, but I will just go through some of the basic things that he put on. So it's basically a bunch of screenshots from the game, tons of things like that, loads of screenshots, one from a streamer where the CM Pro got involved, and there's graphs of how many people owned it, so by May 2018 it looks like there's over 2,250k owners, which is a lot. So this Players Every Day graph actually shows the Twitch viewers, so at one point there was more than 60,000 Twitch viewers, maybe even slightly less players than that, about 59k, I can't really tell where the blue line is. That's crazy for an indie survival game, it just shows how well this did compared to what they thought. So this is an interesting one, so the plan for Zonautica was it was going to be a small project using Unity, casual iPad for developers six months. Now, I, did, I wasn't aware that it was for the iPad originally, or what that means entirely. I don't know if they were making an iOS version? I don't understand that. I wasn't aware that that was happening. I don't know. If you know what that is, then tell me. But the reality was that it was a big project with Unity, so they kept that at least. Moved on to PC and consoles. 25 developers instead of four. It took five years instead of six months, and about $10 million it cost to make it. That's a lot of money. So the original idea for the game was a blue ocean strategy, underwater Minecraft, survival sandbox, science fiction, and no guns. Uh, and the explanation for this is, in the US there was a horrible school shooting not too long ago and we really felt like we shouldn't make another game about shooting things. That has been their position since the beginning of the game, this is not something that's come around recently. They have always said they don't want guns in the game, and I completely agree and understand why. So there's also some screenshots of really, really early development prototypes, as you can see. And actually, if you look into the last one, there's a, there's a f first sub which looks very different to the ones we have in the game at the moment the big propeller on the back, and a bathysphere? I think that could be the Seamoth, I really can't tell. So their goal was originally to match the concept art as fast as possible, which personally I think they did really well. There was no procedural world and no co-op, which they have stuck to all of this time, and that's why the mod exists now for PC. So they learned that the Aurora attracts. I don't know whether this was before they added it as a 3D model or afterwards that you could actually go to because at the beginning it was a 2D thing on the landscape that just wouldn't get any closer the more you swam towards it. Obviously they learned that people wanted to go towards it because obviously if you see a massive thing in distance you probably want to go towards it because that's just human nature. So when they released it in early access it looked like they had underwhelming sales and barely enough revenue so they decided that they needed new features that would make it different from other games on the early access market, which of course they did, which is why it's so successful. Then they learned about Perseverance, they shipped the monthly updates and added more of everything. In addition, they added headliner features like the Cyclops and the Reaper, and then because of that they started to gain traction in sales. So there's, there's a brilliant bit here where it starts off with traction, so they're talking about how traction began and how it took off, and they explain it as streamers, which is brilliant. So there's a screenshot of Dixon playing it, Frankie on PC, Joe Excepticeye and Markiplier all playing it, and that's essentially it. It's just a big thank you at the end there with some screenshots. Just a really cool thing to see if you have been following Subnautica from the beginning like me, or at least from near the beginning. It's just really nice to see this all put together. So awesome job Jonas on that. But I will leave the link to this in the description if you want to go and check this out yourself because there are more slides than I just showed you. It's a fun thing to read so go and do that. But that's pretty much everything for the moment. There isn't any more news to cover today so I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a like. I'll see you guys in the next video. Try my friends. You are fake news.